three big items. First is just capital in my district. Other is concern around repairs that turn out to be Band-Aids versus long-term repairs that we need. And then the last is privatizing parkland. In 2014, Mayor de Blasio provided $35 million in capital bill to begin rebuilding the crumbling East River Esplanade. In 2017, the Esplanade in front of Gracie Mansion actually fell into the river. Now I'm grateful that work began this summer. I'd like to know why it took three years to get shovels in the ground and why I had to learn from our town, the local paper in the district, that the project's actually been pushed back from a completion date of this spring to uh, this winter. So that is question one. We don't believe it's delayed. Uh, we're trying to understand the question. We don't believe there was a delay, so it's something we can address after the meeting because that, I'm that is that this. is great news. And then just why did it take three years to get shovels in the ground until after the Esplanade had already collapsed? Uh, I'm told by a deputy right. commissioner we didn't have money in the budget. It was budgeted in 2014. You want to respond? Um, we did um, the area right around Gracie Mansion. What we what we did do is we decided instead of procuring a brand new contract to do that, we used an existing retaining wall contract to start that project. So the retaining wall contract. I'm sorry if I'm getting into too much detail. We had to start off with a change order because the items were not in that contract right away to start that project. But we're happy to say that we've been able to figure that out and work that out, and we're actually now in construction. Okay, and along the same lines. Sorry, Therese Braddock. Sure, and then along those lines, so my understanding is that Parks has budgeted 15.4 million on repairs that will, according to Parks, only last five to 10 years before additional work is required versus $56.9 million, which would prevent work for another 25 to 30 years. Uh, so for instance, at the location where there was a collapse, there's budgeted 7.9 million, which is a five to 10 year Band-Aid versus 18.9, which would keep it in good repair for 25 years. Will the city allocate the remaining $41.5 million to do this properly? Well, as you know, the mayor was very clear on having a greenway around the entire island of Manhattan. Uh, there is 56 million to do critical repairs on the esplanade, uh, basically between 60th and 125th. So that is one commitment. Number two, you're already aware the mayor had a, uh, dedicated $100 million to rebuild a new portion of Esplanade between 53rd and 61st Street. And then there's ongoing commitment through the East Harlem rezoning to do another portion. So there is a commitment to move forward. Uh, we're proceeding with that step by step, but all tolling that up, there's really hundreds of millions of dollars going into the Esplanade over time to improve it. I understand your concern, but clearly there is a commitment uh, by this administration to address the deficiencies on the East River Esplanade. My, my understanding is that there's still a shortfall of $169 million to cover from 60th to 125th if work is to continue into phase three. Uh, will that be allocated? Thank you. Well, right now we want to, EDC is doing another waterfront inspection. Uh, as we look at any future estimates, we want to understand exactly what is needed. But as I stated, the mayor is committed to the East River Esplanade by clearly stating that he wants to see a continuous Esplanade and Greenway around the island of Manhattan. And to show this 56 million to 100 million and additional resources to East Harlem is a strong commitment that the mayor is serious about making sure that the, a resource on the east side will be implemented as well as on the well, west we, side. We are, we are looking for that extra $169 million to show that, uh, okay. put his money where his mouth is. Duly noted, Council Member. And then I think last but not least, in your testimony you stated, quote, for many years the benefits of our park system so vital for our city's health and happiness were not enjoyed equally by all New Yorkers. I couldn't agree more. There's a playground in my district who was open in 1909. Since the 1970s, this park has been closed to the public for free during the year. The current cost per hour is a whopping $180 on Saturdays and Sundays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, the chair of the Parks Committee, his father used to play tennis in our public parks, and I've learned that his father did not have to pay $180 and perhaps may have been prohibited from doing so. This is actually the most expensive tennis bubble concession in the city of New York, with almost every other one at almost half the cost or less. So I guess the first thing is, do you believe that a parks facility charging $180 has an impact on the economic status or race of its users? Uh, and 
after the Parks Department offered multiple design options to the community that were approved by the community boards and local electeds, why Parks reissued uh, the uh, same contract at $180 an hour last summer and why it's reissued the same RFP? Uh, well, let me answer the first one. We, we didn't reissue the same RFP, and as you know, throughout the entire process, I've been very straightforward, clear, and transparent about the entire process. First and foremost, it is a uh, Department of Transportation property. It is not a park and has not been a park. It has been concessioned. Uh, DOT has allowed the Parks Department to use it for a concession, and so that has been what it has been used for, I'm told, as long as anyone could remember. Uh, we did go through a process. We were very clear and transparent with the community about the options that were ahead of us. We had a pilot program this summer to see how that would unfold. Based on public input, uh, which helped frame uh, elements of the RFP, uh, the RFP was issued and we contacted the electors and the community board before that RFP was released. We're now in a process of evaluating that RFP that's looking for a minimum of three months of free uh, programming uh, in that facility. So that's about all I can say. I do know that uh, staff had talked to you and your staff about this further, uh, but this is something that we felt we've been fully transparent uh, throughout the process, uh, and now uh, we are optimistic there'll be a continued public use on Department of Transportation property. Every other bubble in the city is Columbus Day to April. At this location, you put out an RFP from September to June. It feels wrong to me to charge a New Yorker $180 to use a park that's been a park since 1909, according to the Board of Aldermen. Does it feel wrong to you to charge $180 to use a park? We evaluate, there's a, always a combination of capital invested as well as uh, what uh, the concessionaire needs to do. We always look for capital improvement, and they have to go out and get a loan uh, to upkeep and improve a space. Uh, we look at both the capital cost as well as the fees to make it successful. Uh, Parks is not in the money-making business. This goes into the general fund. Our goal is to offer an experience on a city property. In this case, it is the Department of Transportation. It is not parks, uh, which means that that park can close at any time should DOT need to do repairs on the Queensboro Bridge. I hear your concern, but this is something that I felt we have been entirely transparent, the RFP process as well as the decision-making process. But as you know, I'm certainly willing to sit down with you further and have conversations. Mr. Thank Kalos, you to the yes, chairs for their indulgence. Along. Thank you very much. Good luck with your hearing.